Yo, what's going on everybody? So we have crazy Jaguars news that broke yesterday and it doesn't actually involve the Jaguars football organization. Um, it actually involves an employee of the Jaguars financial department, the manager of FPNA, financial planning and analysis, um, essentially stealing $22 million from the Jaguars over the course of the last like five years um, through a credit card kind of thing that he had going on. So um, this one definitely hits close to home to me because I am an accountant. That is my day job when I'm not doing YouTube videos. Um, and I am on my way to becoming a CPA, which stands for Certified Public Accountant. It is the you know highest level of accreditation you can get in the accounting industry. And you have to basically pass four different exams and I have passed three of them. And I only have one more exam left than I am a CPA. So it hits close to home to me because look, I do deal with people in F and financial planning and analysis, even though that is more of the finance side. Um, it does kind of relate to accounting in a way. But the way this really affects me is that um, back in 2021, a guy actually reached out to me to potentially work in the Jaguars um, organization and in, in the finance and accounting department. And it was something that I was really interested in. I actually had a few conversations about it but ultimately i said like no because i had just bought my house in orlando and just didn't want to relocate because i had a bunch of kind of roots set up here um, but the guy that i was having conversations with was this guy that what actually went through and stole a 22 million dollars so on the time when i was on the phone with him a couple years ago you know this whole scheme was going on over there so there's a good chance that i really did dodge like a major bullet even though the report said that no other people were involved um, in this scheme, it was just him. It is crazy that like kind of how this got, how this slipped through the cracks. So essentially, um, the guy's name was, um, Amit, his name was Amit Patel. And, um, I didn't remember his name from back then, but you know, I searched him up on LinkedIn and I couldn't find him. So I was like, okay, maybe this isn't the guy. But then, you know, I, what I did was I went through my messages and started scrolling down a bunch and I saw a message from LinkedIn user. It just says LinkedIn user because the account is now, you know, disabled. You know, I had a few conversations with him and it was just kind of crazy, you know, what went on here. So it says um, he racked up more than $22 million in fraudulent credit card purchases, according to court records. Um, he allegedly used the Jaguars virtual credit card accounts to purchase everything from luxury travel arrangements and hotels to a $95,000 watch. And... This is just crazy how something like this... Now, how does something like this happen? Um, basically, it looks like there was a breach of internal control. And, you know, one major one major thing here is the fact that, you know, when there should not be a sole person involved in this whole credit card process, like everything should, should be dual controlled. If, you know, he should not be... If he makes a payment, he should not be authorizing that payment. He shouldn't be the only one to see it. Um, generally, what happens is... If you are an approver of expenses, um, you're going to be a guy that, okay, the expense, expense some, somebody lower than you comes up, you approve it. But if you are the final approver and, you know, you submit something for payment, it should go to somebody above you. You know, he's the manager of financial planning and analysis. So it should go to maybe like a director of accounting, may, maybe a CFO, all the way up to like a CEO. Um, so it, it should roll up like that. I mean, even Mark Lamping might need to do it. You know, who knows? But it's um he it says he's spent at least five full seasons as an employee of the Jaguars finance department beginning in 2018. Prosecutors are alleged that in 2019 he became the sole administrator for the organization's virtual credit card program, which gave him the ability to approve new accounts and request changes and available credit. He was responsible for classifying virtual credit card transactions and business reports. So in order to do this, like like all companies, you have an annual audit where an independent audit firm comes in, reviews financials, they review everything from, you know, different, whether it be, you know, different debts that you have or, you know, making sure that, hey, you have this huge asset on the books, we need to confirm that it, it exists. And, um, you know, you there are different expenses that come through, like they might look at something and say, whoa, there's a $2,000 airfare, okay, let me see the backup, let me see the documentation for this. So, if this was actually passing audits and stuff like that, then there's a very good chance that this dude was manipulating a bunch of stuff. And, you know, you actually are able to do that. Like, you know, it, it doesn't take that much editing to say, hey, you know, I have this PDF from an airline. You know, you can go in there and kind of update different numbers and things like that.
but you know the fact that this was able to you know slip through you know everybody in our organization and it also slipped through the uh, the you know auditing firm that looked at this and it happened over five years up to 22 million dollars i mean that is crazy and a lot of people think oh like you know a billion dollar organization it would be like somebody with a personal account that has a hundred thousand dollars and that you're not going to notice a couple dollars gone well it's different in the accounting department you track everything down to the penny you know what i mean it is very easy to be able to um to because you do bank reconciliations, you make sure that um, you know you're accruing stuff correctly, and you know you have different budgets that you go by and that you stand by. And the fact that you know all these crazy charges were racking up, and um, and it was able to go undetected based on budgets, and you know everybody, every company, most companies have airfare, like they should be able to you know compare your sales to different industries like like you can compare let's say the jaguars charges versus the buccaneers you know what i mean the, those those accounting departments shouldn't or those two teams shouldn't have massively different departments like one team shouldn't be spending you know five million dollars more per year than the other team on airfare for um, the different people within you know their company so it's crazy that something like this happened it's crazy that I'm, i was almost in an accounting department that was um, really involved in doing something like this. And, you know, I can't speak on too much. I mean, it sounds like to me there would, for something like this to happen, there would need to be more than, you know, one person involved because usually stuff like this, when it happens, it's, you know, there's a few different pillars. There's, there's opportunity, there's like rationalization and there's, you know, collusion and, um, and, look the if if collusion happens it's tough to detect stuff like this because that means more than one person is involved and they have to you know circumvent a bunch of different controls to make this thing happen but um yeah this is why things you know are so complex because like we've seen really the accounting industry change a lot even just since in the past 20 years there's been crazy advancements because you know in the early to that early and mid 2000s you had crazy stuff like Enron go on, um, you had WorldCom, you had uh, Bernie Madoff, like all these different things where, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't millions of dollars worth of fraud. It was like billions, billions and billions. And oftentimes, you know, these, these guys have all this money and they say, okay, I'm going to let this financial advisor take care of it because he's the best. And little do they know that these people are basically Ponzi schemers. And, you know, and, and that's the big thing about accounting is that, you know, you're going to look at a company like WorldCom, you're going to look at, you know, their financials online and be like, oh my gosh, like, this is a really good company. I want to dump my money in there. But, you know, you could be anybody and you can invest in anything public, but you have to be able to trust their financial statements. And that's the work of auditors to make sure they go in and dig through all the work and make sure that, um, that the numbers and everything are accurate. And in this case, it was able to slip through auditors and, you know, I don't think the Jaguars aren't a publicly traded company, so it's not like they can have like, you know, people go in and like buy stock. But, you know, that's one reason why the CPA, why why get, being becoming a CPA is so difficult. You know, I think it's like the, the one of the hardest certificates out there to get. There's like um, I think there's only like a 40 percent pass rate on these CPA exams. And many people who start trying to become a CPA quit is because it's so tough, but they don't make it tough just to you know, be selective and, and make it so inclusive. They do it to protect the interests of the public. Um, and, you know, the public, when when innocent people say, oh my gosh, like, you know, I have a lot of money, I have $100,000, I want to invest 50000 of this into stocks, I'm going to put all this money into, you know, Enron, and because they're doing good and I believe in this industry, but, you know, it turns out that the, that the people who were creating the financial statements were fraudulently reporting it, and that the accounting standards out there weren't able to weren't able to stop it, you know, and it's, you know, crazy how even to this day that, you know, with all the different stuff out there that, you know, people are still able to, able to circumvent it. So it's crazy. And this one, you know, really did speak out to me just because, you know, I get interested in, you know, financial stuff like this. And I get interested in the fact that I actually, uh, kind of knew this guy and he was interested. I mean, I, if I wanted the job, I probably could have had it, um, which is, you know, crazy to think, but, 
uh, yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this pretty long video, but I'll be out with a preview video later tonight. Go Jacks.